So I screwed my views and killed my channel's growth so that you don't have to. Take this video for example, just one setting during upload tanked my views and it got less than 140 views in two weeks, now making it the smallest video on my channel in the last two years. I like to call this setting the newbie button because it essentially takes you back to zero and gives you the reach of a brand new channel. Now annoyingly this tip came from a larger YouTuber who I know, like and trust, which just goes to show you can't believe everything you've been told by experts online and in YouTube in general. A lot of the time they will just be copying other big YouTubers, assuming that what's inside their videos will actually be true, so all they end up doing is propagating a lie. Sometimes you just have to f around on your own and find out. And that's exactly what I decided to do recently. So here are the main five things that I learned in the last three months that took me from thousands of views per video down to just hundreds. The first one on the list is thumbnails. Now for a long time, I believed that building a brand and having your face in the thumbnail helped you get clicks. And I was told this over and over again by larger YouTubers, so I believe that this must be true. But since growing a number of faceless channels and now one branded one, I can tell you that this just isn't true. Sometimes your face is actually holding you back from getting views. You see, when starting out, you're essentially a nobody. And I know that may come across as a harsh truth, but bear with me here. Yes, it's true that the emotion that faces show can be useful in thumbnails as our brains are geared up to read expressions, so it's a good way to convey messages quickly. But that's it. Other than connecting with a few loyal fans, which you could do in the video anyways, your face carries no more value than a stock image would, and in many cases it's actually taking up too much space for something that could be much more valuable inside the thumbnail. So ask yourself this, is your face adding value or is it taking up crucial real estate in the thumbnail? Think about this example. If I was making a new video about an iPad being too bendy, do you think a picture of me holding up an iPad that you can barely see while trying to bend it would do well? Or do you think a close up of an iPad actually bending and possibly breaking would actually do better as a thumbnail? Now it's hard to know for sure, but my bet would be on the close up of the iPad because the bendy iPad is the important visual message here, not my face. You can also see that the thumbnail doing best on this channel is one without my face in it as it conveys the message perfectly and my face wouldn't add any extra value. I do of course have videos with over 100,000 views that do have my face inside them, though normally with an emotion showing such as surprise or fear, meaning again that a stock image would potentially do just as well here. So the message of the thumbnail and not your face always comes first. You'll see that big channels that understand this often have a mixed face to no face ratio on their channels. With that said, there is a time in your growth where your face alone can add some value. As your channel starts to get bigger and you have a loyal, engaged audience, when they see your face, they will recognize you and choose to watch your videos above other similar videos. This is the point at which you are starting to build a brand that carries some perceived value. It's why a black t-shirt with a Nike logo on it is gonna be much more expensive than just a plain black one of the same quality. The second point is taking breaks from your channel. I recently stopped posting for a number of months while I was recording the update to my YouTube course, which I'll link to in the video description if you would like more in-depth training after this video. You see, my original goal was to keep posting while I was creating the course, and for a while I managed to do this. But in the end, it was just all too much work at the same time, and I just stopped posting any videos at all to the channel. If you look here, you can see before I stopped uploading weekly, videos were getting thousands or even tens of thousands of views. But as I posted less, they started to drop. And when I started again after the break, views were just in the hundreds, no longer the thousands. This is because of how the algorithm works these days. It's all about relevancy and momentum. You can see it in my numbers week on week for subscribers that keep coming back to the channel. These numbers keep going down. So although my overall views for the channel didn't drop that much thanks to my search traffic, my subscriber and existing viewer engagement did. In fact, it completely crashed. Where I was getting thousands of views in the first week, often making a video go viral, now I was just getting hundreds. That's because older viewers and subscribers were no longer seeing my content. I was only relevant to newer viewers. All that trust and relationship building with previous viewers had diminished. The saying out of sight and out of mind rings really true here, and that saying is exactly how the YouTube algorithm now works. 
YouTube pushes out your content to viewers who like it and keeps doing this until it has nothing else to put in front of them. At which point it starts cheating on you and looking for similar content in different places to serve those people until you are fully replaced. You eventually drop off their homepage and stop getting recommended altogether, out of sight and out of mind. So when you eventually do start uploading again, it's a bit like turning up at an ex-girlfriend's house with a bunch of flowers. Sure, sometimes you might get lucky, but it's most likely that she's moved on and probably now thinks that you're a bit weird and desperate. So I understand that sometimes as YouTubers we get burnt out or we need a break or we need to build out an amazing YouTube course like I did. Links in the description. But the lesson here is to keep posting, at least a couple of times per month, just to keep things alive and ticking over. You want to try to plan for these breaks and have a content buffer in place. And before you start shouting at me, but Gareth, what about subscriber notifications? Won't those tell subscribers when we upload a new video? Well, that's my next tip that you want to forget about. Forget about asking people to subscribe. It's a total waste of your time. Do you know what percentage of my views came from notifications on this channel in the last year? 0.1%. That's 1,200 views out of nearly 1 million. Do you think that shouting, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications in each video is worth 1,200 views in a year? I mean, I can't be sure here, but I'm willing to bet that I would actually lose more viewers by annoying people than I would by the extra few subscribers that I get from asking. So just stop. If people really like your channel and your content, they will naturally subscribe and they'll end up being even better subscribers for it. I've never had any channel go above 0.5% for notifications, so it really is just chump change. Ask for a like or a comment as this will improve your engagement and tell YouTube that people really liked your video. The next tip is telling people to avoid competitive niches. Yes, it would be great if we could all find a virgin niche with huge demand and high CPMs, but these days everyone around the world is banging out faceless channels at a rapid rate and they have research tools to find rising niches. So you aren't going to keep it a secret for long. The only way is through and competition shows that there's demand. Just start and do it better. And if you can't do it better, then specialize on a small part and grow from there. Carve out your own niche and style. That's where the stable long-term money really comes from. And generally what goes up quickly comes down quickly. Next up is the dreaded newbie button and the one that if left unchecked in your upload settings can destroy your video's reach. I came across this tip in a video by Marcus Jones and I'm guessing he hasn't used it or fully tested it or he's just repeating what another YouTuber said. Now if we keep coming down, we're going to see this setting here. Publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers. This is going to be for most people automatically checked. In my case, it's grayed out. But when you upload a brand new video and you come down to the same section, you'll have the option to toggle this on and off. And the problem I see a lot of small YouTubers doing is leaving this checked. When they have a lot of content on their channel that's completely unrelated from each other. When you upload a new video, you have an option to turn off a setting that notifies subscribers and pushes it out to their homepage. The idea, at least as Marcus describes, is that you don't want to notify your subscribers of a video that may be outside of the normal niche, meaning that they won't like it or watch it. I had a video about online course platforms that I thought would be a good chance to test this theory, given that not all YouTubers are creating online courses. So I figured this button would be a good move. I assumed that the weight of my channel would at least make it rank highly in search and that YouTube would share it out to the people in my list and sphere that like this type of content. Nope, I got 10 views in the first day and less than 140 views in the first two weeks. I thought about pulling it and uploading it again, but it's now ranking for a few longer keywords. So rather than roll the dice again, I'll just leave it and create some more content. The point here is that we now know that subscriber notifications are a total waste of your time. And if they see it on their homepage, it's up to them if they want to click. But by turning it off, you miss out on that early boost in views. And those views may have gotten YouTube to push the video out to a larger audience and it could have performed much, much better. Just talking about it makes me want to re-upload the video again. Nothing is worse than a video that you put a ton of work and effort into underperforming. So leave this newbie button set to on, push everything out to your audience and make the most of your channel's growth and size. And if you think that none of your audience will be interested in the video you're creating, then maybe you shouldn't be creating it in the first place. 
And finally, we have shorts. Every big YouTuber in the last couple of years has been telling us to create shorts as YouTube are pushing them hard and it's an easy way to get views to grow your channel. But normally what comes easy carries little to no value. And just because something works for others doesn't mean that you should do it and that it's going to be right for you and your channel. We're now starting to learn that shorts can kill the reach of your longer form videos and tank your channel's overall growth. Now, if you're currently using shorts or you're thinking about using them for your channel and you would like to know why and how they might be actually damaging your growth, then watch this video next where I explain everything in more detail. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.